Welcome back to some more Law and Order. We are gonna continue on with episode one and see who this hacker guy is. Weird place for an interview, Curtis. Witness requested we meet here. He thinks it's all a big game. I get the impression he's young. His mom answered the phone when I first called. Speaking of games, good cop or bad cop? Bad cop, definitely. Suits me. Call me Anonymous. We already have your name and phone number, dumbass. Yeah, so we're gonna call you Tom, not Anonymous. Uh, let's talk about Rachel. Did you know Rachel Trevino? She mentioned your name on her blog. She did? Oh my god, really? What'd she say about me? Does she like me? Does she want to meet? You sure you didn't know her? Or want to know her? I mean, you're smart, Tom. All you had to do was hack in, learn her secrets, get close. No, 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 it's not like that. But she still wouldn't have you. It drove you crazy. And then, things just got out of control. It's not your fault, am I right? Wait, what's not my fault? What are you talking about? Look, you gotta believe me, I didn't know this girl. I don't know any girls. Yes. See, he had no reason to lie there, you know, and he didn't look like he was a liar. Tom is a nerd. He would never kill another nerd. It's against their code. What? <laughs> uh, he spoke about Rachel in the present tense. Go with your gut, yeah. He did talk about her in the present tense. Good job. It's Detective. okay, Tom. I believe you. We believe you. Calm down. Rachel was killed the other night. I just had to make sure you weren't playing us. We'll play good cop this time. We talked to some people at Mercury Telstar. You have a reputation there. People said you're good. Too good, maybe. We thought you might have done something illegal, but they said their security is way too tough for you to crack. <laughs> Please. I wrote their security. The firewalls, the protocol encryption, it's all me, detective. So, you could crack a voicemail account? Stupid easy. What about deleting voicemails? In my sleep, detective. And what did Mercury Telstar think of that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see what you're Where were you on Saturday? You know, I know he didn't Everywhere. Care. Tom, we can go downtown right now if that's how you want to play it. Sorry, I was online. On a raid. Anyone corroborate this? <laughs> About 20 warriors in my guild. Let me rephrase. Did anyone real see you? Yeah, my mom. I live with her. She was there the whole time. Oh well, yeah, obviously. It's possible. I mean, why wouldn't it be? What makes it possible? Okay, that's bullshit. Okay, <laughs> she would so lie to protect her son. That bitch in station knew Tom's mother. Detective Curtis already knows that Tom lived with his mom. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, I talked to your mom on the phone already. She know you're out this late? Hilarious. Hilarious. I'm laughing too. We're gonna talk about you deleting that voicemail, sir. So, why would a nice guy like you want to delete voicemails? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Curtis, can I tase this guy? Tom, I think you're starting to irritate my partner. You like games, Tom? Let's play a game. It's called Detective Benson Likes You for a Murder. I throw you in jail, and you try to survive as long as you can against the drug addicts and the gang members who live there. You can post the results on your blog. I can picture the Facebook update now. Well, I, I just... <laughs> okay, okay. There was another reason. Was there another reason, sir? Let's talk about that reason. What is this another reason? Well, I was they paid to access that. the account, of course. By who? I, I don't want to say. You better say. Or do we need to call your mom and tell her you're running a hacking ring out of her basement? Oh, Jesus, no. Look, don't get her involved. That woman has enough problems. These people are powerful. Names. We need names. So was this the Mafia we after or what? Or some RuneScape guild? Who knows? I don't know their names. But you know they're powerful? How does that work? We only did business over the phone. They had their caller ID blocked, so I, you know, I, I never knew their names. 
Caller ID block. That's some bullshit, because you can hack it. Uh-uh. I don't believe you. You can hack that shit. Come on, now. Tom said that he knew, at least no. <laughs> He's a weaselly little nerd and lies about everything. Uh, James Gray said Tom had crack caller ID and always knew his caller was running. That's right. I think that's true. He paid Tom. No, I think it's that one. Look at that. I'm flawless today, boys. You're a terrible liar, Tom. Your old boss told us you know how to crack caller ID codes. You know those names. And you're going to tell us one way or another. Oh. Oh. What's about what the hell's FTP? So, Tom, how many uh, FTPs do you have? Where'd you learn that word? You're using that word wrong. FTPs. Do you have them? Someone taught you a computer word and you're using it wrong. Just stop. I don't even know what FTP is myself. I was hoping he'd teach me something, but he didn't. Why would your old company accuse you of hacking? Mercury Telstar hates me. They'll accuse me of anything. I'm a rogue anarchist activist. Those accounts are my playground. And you hacked Rachel Trevino's. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Why, why are you asking? Your old company seems to think you did, and you apparently possess the skills. No, I don't. I, look, I, well, for instance, I couldn't have gotten through their firewall. Right? No way. The protocol encryption alone is just way beyond my skill. I don't believe you. <laughs> Obviously. Wrote the FTP. No, he didn't. Tom's doing People are testing. Hey, I'm there to send the Sure, I'm testing crimes. They do not commit crimes. What's the truth? Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, he did say he wrote. Did he? He did say that. He did say he he wrote. This is scary. I'm pretty sure he said that. Look at that. We're doing good today. You're I lying, thought. twerp. Totally not lying, detective. Remember how you were bragging on how you wrote the security? Oh, <laughs> right. That oh. gives you means. Now we just need motive and opportunity. Hey, wait a second. You didn't Mirandize me. I know my rights. Oh, Tom, this is just an interview, not an arrest. So sorry. Miranda doesn't apply. Oh, we're still talking to the you guy. You know what? Playtime is over. Oh, no, we're not. You better start coughing up solid answers or I'm throwing you in Rikers, and your mom will have to spend her last cent to post your bail. Okay, okay, okay. But listen, I only hacked the accounts to sell the voicemail passwords. Passwords? Plural? Yeah, I did a lot of them. Celebrities, politicians, you name it. Then I sold the passwords to this lady named Gwendolyn Scott. She's like a PR flack. Did she ask you to mess with Rachel's account? Yeah, I figured it was corporate espionage or something. You know, what do I care? Let the capitalist pigs brawl in the mud. Who's it gonna hurt? Rachel Trevino. Have a great night, Deep Throat. Did she just call him Deep Throat? <laughs> what? Oh, that was that. That was pretty good. I liked that. That was pretty good. I actually done awesome. I got six out of six. I got the two bonus stars. Look at that. I've done amazing that time. I think we done every option. So, wow. That's probably the only time it'll ever happen. But, yeah, this kid's got something to do with it. He's making that money, though, because he's selling passwords. Making bank. All right, let's keep going on. Enough of me rambling. 112 Retreat. We're going to start by what we call defining your moment. Gwendolyn Scott? Yes. I'm Detective Ray Curtis. This is Detective Benson. We need to talk to you for a minute. So sorry. I'm busy. It's important. My client is important. You can call my office. You know, a guy named Tom Newberry just gave me this girl's number. PR Flack. She likes to buy voicemail passwords and blackmail her clients. Maybe I'll call her instead. Just a bluff. Is he bluffing her? Oh, he's calling her. Oh ho ho. We'll play detective. Five minutes. Well played. Was that fun, detective? Sometimes I like to play rough. Well, so do I. But a little charm can go a long way. I'm gonna be charming then. If you say charm will go a long way, let's be let's, let's let's do just that. Let's be charming. Sorry, I promise this will only take a moment of your time. 
You're a busy girl. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I promise I won't make up extra questions as an excuse to talk to you longer. All right, Romeo. Settle down. Ask away. Oh, you know I'm going to be asking questions to stay here. Let's talk about Tom. Do you know Tom Newberry? No. <sighs> I don't know, actually. I didn't say. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. What? What did I miss? I, if you could I just hurry really... up and we could be all done playing cops and robbers, I'd be ever so grateful. I mean, seriously, what's up with the third degree here? So I done so good last episode. I missed up the first question on this one. My defense, even though it ain't really defense, I wasn't really paying attention to her. So she might not even gave any cues. It might come something in the past. I don't know. I'm just going to go on. What's up about Rachel? What's the name? Rachel Trevino mean anything to you? No. Should it? She was murdered last night. We found her body at the Parkview Regency. Oh, poor girl. As if life isn't tough enough for housekeeping. Is there something wrong with what she just said? Poor girl. Housekeeping. Yeah. Yeah, there's something wrong with that. She, she doesn't do housekeeping. Wait. Plus, she did know. She said she don't really know that. Why wow, she's suddenly acting nice? How did she know Rachel was with the Alcatraz? Oh, about life. How does she know about life of a housekeeper? How does she know she was a housekeeper? The other one made no sense. Correct. Yay. I didn't say anything about her being with housekeeping. I must have read it in the paper. Nothing's been released to the papers yet. It must have been gossip. You know how these things get around, detective. Yeah, right. I don't believe her. Come on now. Gossip my ass. Tom Newberry already told us you knew her. Oh, that, Rachel. Of course. My mistake. I can be such an airhead. Oh, we're going to talk about some celebrity gossip. What kind of business do you do, Miss Scott? The PR biz is a very careful, very delicate balance between what you know, what you say, and who you say it to. There was this one guy, used to be major A-list, now he's major A-hole. Anyway, he crashed his car outside Savannah, stinking drunk and out of his mind on PCP. I mean, who does PCP anymore? <sighs> he gets out, strips all his clothes off, and flags down a car full of college students. Well, by the time they got to Daytona Beach, they had two hours of him ranting about Canadians on their cell phone cameras. I had to pay them each $10,000 for the phones and footage, 40 grand, and on top of that, I had to pay out for damage to the car seats due to excessive sweating. Excessive. Enchanting story, Miss Scott. Hey, I got the red ring. I had a feeling that was going to be one of those. Excessive sweating. Is that what PCP does to you? I've never took it, so I wouldn't know. So if I look up your phone records and Tom Newberry called you, and you talked to him more than once, now, would I be crazy to think you're lying to me? I'd say you were just jealous. Me? Jealous? No. She's not. That's right, motherfucker. No more exes. People in public relations can't be trusted. She's getting angry as a sign of guilt. That is true. Anger is a sign of guilt. Fuck. He kind of is, right? I'm not the jealous Sometimes. type, Miss Scott, and I don't like playing games. You knew him. Fine. Yes. We did business. I paid him for insider information. Every time I brag about not getting an X, I get a fucking X. Shit, I can't afford another one. Let's see how good we do. You paid Tom for what exactly? Passwords. I paid Tom for access to voicemail accounts. So you could delete Rachel Trevino's voicemails? Look, I really shouldn't say. Did you want to keep her quiet? Miss Scott, were you involved in her murder? No, no, I did delete Rachel's voicemails, yes, but I did it for someone else, on someone else's orders. Understand? I believe her. I believe her. She's seen genuine. Tom confirmed that she's paid access from Cat Never. And he never personally deleted the voicemails. His statement must be true. 
because it makes her look guilty. Shit. I'm gonna go with the third one. James Gray confirmed that Tom Newberry deleted voice files during a hacker attack. I don't remember him saying that though. He never personally deleted voice files. Yes. Oh my God, I was sweating that one. I was sweating that one. All right, I'm listening. Why don't you tell me a little more? Was someone else involved? Oh shit, we're not done. <laughs> Fuck. I can't get that last egg. Someone Who else. asked you to delete the voicemails? A client. I really can't tell you. I'm gonna find out anyway. I'm actually pretty good at this detective thing. <sighs> well, crap. I guess it's all over for me anyway. Here's the deal. I gave Rachel's password and voicemails to my usual buyer, Alexander Baron. Alexander Baron, as in CEO of Wider Media? The Russian guy who owns like half the television stations in America? The very same. Baron bought Rachel's voicemail access for me a few weeks ago and then told me to delete them all. Sure. Sure, why not? Why not? I'm probably wrong. Yes, I did it. That excessive sweat is coming in. I'm experiencing it. What media was I could get this wrong, you the fucking eggs, so Alexander Baron was listening on Rachel's phone account. Was she was it? Berkeley Tester does own wider media. That's true. I don't think that was in the notebook. Ooh, but I think wider media was on the notebook. Oh no. the first or second one I know I didn't see no Alexander wider media was it a no I'm gonna go with the third one could be wrong Fuck! it was the other one son of a bitch listen I've had enough of you two any other questions Whoa. can go through my lawyer this was fun we should do it again never okay thanks ciao <laughs> all right so uh to save you guys the torture of sitting here going through the same uh, conversation again. I'm gonna skip it to the part where I just got at, and I'm gonna ask the right question this time. So, see you in a quick second. Alright, we're back. Um, apparently the conversation changes if you answer questions right early on. So, I'm pretty sure that's gonna leave me in the wider media part. So, let's hit someone else and see. Who asked you to delete the voicemails? A client. I really can't tell you. I'm gonna find out anyway. I'm actually pretty good at this detective thing. <sighs> well, crap. I guess it's all over for me anyway. Here's the deal. I gave Rachel's password and voicemails to my usual buyer, Alexander Baron. Alexander Baron, as in CEO of Wider Media? The Russian guy who owns like half the television stations in America? The very same. Baron bought Rachel's voicemail access for me a few weeks ago and then told me to delete them all. Okay, so I was right. That was that conversation. So this time, even if I get it wrong, I'm okay. So yes, I believe her. I got the extra star. Uh, what evidence supports your feelings? Now, excuse me. Now I'm pretty sure that was what the answer, right? It was the answer. Oh my goodness! Should have just went with my gut and hit that one. Dang it. Wider media. Rachel wrote that in her day planner. It didn't click until now. Miss Scott, why was Alexander Baron interested in Rachel Trevino? She's a maid. He's a Russian billionaire. I don't get it. Rachel Trevino was not a hotel maid. She was an activist, a blogger, and she had uncovered some dirty, dirty secrets about Alexander Baron. He's a very bad boy detective. What did she find out? Baron has a problem keeping it in his pants, especially when it comes to housekeeping staff. We've had to cover up a few unsavory encounters. Rachel tried to set up a sting going undercover at the hotel, and I honestly don't know what happened after that, but I think she got in over her head. Did Baron kill her? And this is where my lawyer would advise me to keep my mouth shut. Come on, Gwen. Oh, now it's Gwen. I like that. Okay, look, all I'm gonna say is the Parkview Regency Hotel has a front desk, right? Ask them who stayed there on Saturday. Oh, I've increased my detective rank. I'm excited about that one. That's pretty neat, actually. So she, like we, uh, 
I can't even know how. I don't know how I'm gonna word this. Let me just reset. So we found out that she was living another type of life, right? She's in the block. And I don't even know if she's really a housekeeper. So apparently, this dude from Watermere, Alexander, is uh, sticking it to these girls. I guess that's one way of putting it. And she goes undercover. So that's what we got so far. I'm actually gonna wrap it up here. And uh, thanks for watching. Next time we'll see. We'll probably go back. I wouldn't doubt we talked to that one girl at the beginning of the game again. I don't remember her name. We'll go see what's going on. What he was doing over there that Saturday night. Because I got a hunch that he's the guy that stood there Saturday night. But you know, today we interviewed Tom and Gwen. Uh, but that's gonna do it for today. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Hit the sub button if you want. Hit that like button if you enjoy the video. This is Abyss. Like always, peace out.